All right, before I get started, I just want to point out that I don't normally upload tutorials to this channel, so don't subscribe expecting more uh, Moolap tutorials. I'm mainly just making this because there aren't really uh, many other good tutorials out there. Okay, so one problem that a lot of people have with Moolab is that there is uh, no sound, and I think this is just in Windows. Um, what you have to do is you have to download an ACO for all driver. It's just it, it it's basically a simple program that makes Moolab uh, work with your audio. So I'll have a link for that in the description, and that should make your audio work. Now, once you download ACO for all, you're gonna have to go into uh, Moolab click audio setup, click yes, and then um, the audio driver type should be ACO and then the audio driver uh, should be set to ACO for all V2. Now if you're on a Mac as far as I know um, the Mac does not have a problem with this um, I haven't found anything that says otherwise but if you do know otherwise and you know the solution post it in the comments and I'll put it up as an annotation and once you have the ACO for all driver, you may still be having audio problems, and that re kind of relates to that driver. Um, if you have any programs open that use sound or are running flash on the internet, that can cause the ACO for all driver to not work. So what you're going to want to do is, is try to turn off any other programs that use sound or might be using sound and then restart Moolab and, and then it should be working. Um, if it's still not working, I, I, then I really don't know what to tell you. That's 99% of the time that, that makes the audio work, so, so I hope that helps. Alright, now to getting started with making music. Uh, the first thing you want to do is select an, inst uh, an instrument and you want to go down into this rack right here uh, right click, hit replace, uh, go into factory instruments and as you can see here you've got all these different types of instruments let's just go into pads and click analog pad 1 so now if you look up here uh, the first rack will be a uh, analog pad um, and then what he, what you have here is a sequence that is something that you can write music into and you can create as many sequences as you want uh, you can extend a sequence you can make a new one now to do that to create a sequence you press control and you see this little uh, pencil I think it is and you just drag and that's how long it'll be um, another trick you can do is you can uh, click on that press control C at the same time and then control V that'll copy it now see these both say sequence one now the one thing you should take note of that's important for that is whatever you edit in this one or whatever you edit in this one it'll also edit in the same way uh, in the sequences that have the same name so for instance if I put in if I put in a D here it'll show up as a D in the same place over here. Now this, this repeat is because it, if you stretch it out from its normal length it'll have a loop end locator and you, you might want to remove that or you might want to keep it or move it around depending on however you want it to loop. For instance I can put the loop end locator uh, right here and that'll just make it repeat over and over or I can always move it over and it makes the how to increase loop length increase only so that makes the loop length uh, longer so it take it'll take more time okay now for writing the music itself you know that's how you edit sequences but for the actual writing of the music you, you might not understand what this grid here is and I'll explain that um, from up to down those those are all your notes and uh, from left to right that's that's relative to time you'll you can use these keys here as a reference to write your music for instance if I put D here and it'll be D all the way across the whole time so no matter where along this line I put it it'll always be D so if I make like a like a progressive line left to right is time and top to bottom is um, is the notes so now you didn't hear that because the uh, it's just the instrument has a really long um, attack. Now uh, here are all the settings for the instrument. You don't have to understand what all this is to write music. You can always mess around it and see what it does. Uh, let me change the instrument real quick here. Stand in piano. 
All right, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, within the limits of the demo version, you can have you can only have up to four racks before it starts giving you uh, like little warning noises that it, it yeah, and you don't want that. But if you don't have any money, you know you might want to work in with those limits. So keep in mind you can only have up to four racks. Um, now, if you are looking for something you're willing to invest in, uh, Moolab's nice because it's kind of cheap. Uh, whereas you know software like Fruity Loops maybe two hundred dollars and orchestral software maybe closer to five hundred to two thousand dollars. So Moolab might be a good deal for you. So after that, all of the composition is pretty much left up to you, so I might as well give you some tips. Uh, down here, you have the master, which has effect over all of the other instruments or effects that you have laid out over here. Whatever filters or amplifiers or oscillators you put in here, that'll have effect over the other instruments. And however you change this master volume here, that'll affect uh, the volumes of the in other instruments relative to what they're set to. Another important thing to keep note of is your decibel meter here. It should stay in the green when the sound is playing. For instance, I'll show you right here. See, that stayed green, so that, that means it's good. But if it goes into the red, that means it's, uh, it, it's too loud and it needs to be brought down. So you can either control that by changing the master volume, changing the volume of the instrument as a whole, or uh, changing the volume of the individual notes inside the sequence which you can do uh, down here one last thing I should point out to you is the uh, CPU meter which is what this uh, blank box right here is um, it'll fill up if there's too much noise and it's just too loud altogether it, it'll fill up if it's becoming too much for the sound engine so if, if something is seriously affecting that then you might want to consider uh, changing instruments or being a little bit lighter on uh, on a particular instrument so just uh, take note of that finally once you've uh, finished your composition you might want to render it now the way to do that is that you can either render the whole thing you have in your project or you can render a particular section by selecting it, which I just did, and then you go down into uh, Session, and then you click Mix Down Audio, Mix Down Only Selected Parts, yes, because that's what I want to do, and then you uh, click an audio file. You can save it wherever you want. Um, I'll just save it in Movie Music, uh, New File, Tutorial, and then when you do that, um, it just saves as a uh, WMA, I believe. Uh, you can't save it as 32-bit uh, unless you have the full version, but 16-bit still sounds rather top-notch. So then you press OK. So as you can see here in the folder that I chose, our song rendered. Now keep in mind, as long as Moolab is open, uh, the song will not play. So you need to turn off Moolab before you open uh, Windows Media Player or whatever you use to play music. And now for some uh, shameless self-promotion, uh, you can check out some of the songs that I've been able to make with Moolab over on uh, Newgrounds. You can click the annotation or you can click it in the description. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, give it a like if it was uh, useful. And if it wasn't useful or there's something else you want me to tell you, just uh, put it in the comments. I'm usually pretty good about responding. Alright, thanks.